activities and consequent actions, commits suicide just as truly as the man who deliberately blows out his brain. This is seldom realized, but the truth will become increasingly apparent. The biblical injunction to remember that the sins of the fathers will be visited upon the children is a literal statement anent the human heritage of disease from Lemuria and Atlantis. Syphilis and tuberculosis have been extensively prevalent in the first half of the Aryan race, in which we now find ourselves, and today they not only affect the organs of generation or the lung, as they did in the early stages of their appearance but now have involved the bloodstream and consequently the entire organism of the human body. Much has been done in the last 50 years to bring the great Atlantean disease of tuberculosis. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 140 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Under control by simplicity of living, pure and ample food and good air. Much is being done to control, finally, the syphilitic diseases, and both will eventually be stamped out, not only by sound treatment and the discoveries of medical science, but because the race, as it becomes more mentally polarized, will itself deal with the problem from the angle of common sense will decide that the physical sins exact too heavy a penalty and that the possession of that which you have not earned or needed, and which consequently is not rightfully yours, is not worthwhile. It is around these basic ideas that the World War 1914-1945 was fought. We call the unlawful possession of other people's land, territory, goods and chattels, aggression, but this is the same thing in principle as stealing, theft and rape. Today these evils are not only individual sins and faults, but can be national characteristics. The World War has brought the whole problem to the surface of the human consciousness and the ancient Atlantean struggle is being bitterly waged, with the probability that this time the Great White Lodge will triumph. That was not the case in the earlier conflict. Then the war was ended by the intervention of the planetary Logos himself, and that ancient civilization went down into the deeps and was engulfed in water, the symbol of purity, sanitation and universality, and therefore appropriate as an ending for what one of the masters has called, a tuberculously oriented race. Death by drowning and death by obscure physical means which I am not at liberty to describe have both been tried in the effort to salvage humanity. Today, death by fire is the applied technique, and it promises to be successful. In contradistinction to the great Lemurian and Atlantean crises, humanity is now far more mentally alert, the causes of the trouble are recognized, motives are seen more clearly, and thus. Will to good and to change past evil conditions is stronger than ever before. What is beginning to manifest now in the public consciousness is something utterly good and new. The subjective reasons given to account for the appearance of these two most ancient racial diseases may well appear to the non-esotericists as is possible but not probable and is fanciful and too general in nature. This cannot be helped. These two groups of diseases are of such exceedingly ancient origin that I have called them inherent in the planetary life itself and the heritage of all humanity, for in all, the breaking of certain laws will bring about these diseases. 
If I care to do so, I could take you still further back into the realm of cosmic evil as it prevails in our solar system and affects the planetary logos, who is still numbered among the imperfect gods. The outer form of the planet through which he expresses himself is impregnated to a certain depth with the seeds and germs of these two diseases. As immunity is built up, however, as methods of cure are developed, as preventive medicine comes into its own, and as man himself arrives at increasing mental and soul control of the animal and desire nature, these forms of human suffering will disappear, and no matter what statistics may say they are disappearing among the more controlled areas of the human family. As the life of God expressing itself as individual divinity and universal divinity pulsates more powerfully through the kingdoms of nature, these two penalties of evil doing will inevitably no longer be required and will disappear for three reasons. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 141 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4, Esoteric Healing 1. The orientation of humanity towards the light is steadily changing and, light dispels all evil. The light of knowledge and the recognition of causes will bring about those carefully planned conditions which will make the syphilitic diseases and tuberculosis things of the past. 2. The centers below the diaphragm will be subjected to a cleansing, lifting process. The life of the sacral center will be controlled and the energy usually focused there will be extended in creative living. Through the medium of the throat center, the solar plexus center will have its energy lifted to the heart, and the trend of human selfishness will then die out. 3. Complete cures, implemented by science, will bring about a gradual fading out of contagion. Another reason which will bring about the cessation of those practices and modes of living and desiring which account for these diseases is one little recognized as yet. It was referred to by the Christ when he spoke of the time when nothing secret would remain hidden and when all secrets would be shouted aloud from the house tops. The growth of telepathic registration and of the psychic powers such as clairvoyance and clairaudience will eventually tend to strip humanity of the privacy in which to sin. The powers whereby the masters and the higher initiates can ascertain the psychic state and physical condition of humanity, its quality and consciousness, are already beginning to show themselves in advanced humanity. People will sin, commit evil deeds and satisfy inordinate desire, but they will be known to their fellowmen and nothing that they do will be carried out in secret. Someone or some group will be aware of the tendencies in the life of a man, and even of the incidents in which he satisfies some demand of his lower nature, and the fact of this possibility will act as a great deterrent, a far greater deterrent than you can imagine. Man is indeed his brother's keeper, and the keeping will take the form of knowledge and a boycott and sanction, as it is called today in reference to the penalizing of nations. I would have you ponder on these two modes of treating wrongdoing. They will be practically automatically applied as a matter of good taste, right feeling and helpful intention by individuals and groups to other individuals and groups, and in this way crime and the tendency to evil doing will gradually be stamped out. It will be realized that all crime is founded upon some form of disease, or upon a glandular lack or overstimulation, based in turn upon the development or the underdevelopment of some one or other of the centers. An enlightened public. 
Opinion, informed as to man's constitution and aware of the great law of cause and effect, they deal with the criminal through medical means, right environmental condition, and the penalties of boycott and sanction. I have no time to enlarge upon these matters, but these suggestions will give you food for thought. C. Cancer. We come now to a consideration of the rapidly increasing and typical Atlantean disease which we call cancer. We have spoken of one basic widespread disease related to the physical body, we have dealt superficially with another which is a product of the desire nature. Cancer, in our present cycle, the Aryan, is definitely a result of the activity of the lower concrete mind and of the stimulation of the etheric body which the mind can bring about. It is a major disease incident. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 142. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. To stimulation, as far as the Aryan masses are concerned, just as heart disease is also a disease of stimulation, affecting very largely the advanced types of humanity who, through interest in business and leadership, often sacrifice their lives and pay the penalty of misuse and over-concentrated energy by developing various forms of acute heart trouble. Disciples and initiates are prone also to suffer from this disease, owing to the awakening into violent activity of the heart center. In the one case, the life energy flowing through the heart is employed past all human tolerance in handling human affairs. In the other, the heart center opens up and the strain put upon the organ of the heart is too great, and heart disease supervenes. A third cause of heart disease is due to the premature or deliberately planned lifting of the energy of the solar plexus to the heart, thus putting an unexpected strain upon it. I am viewing naturally in broad generalization. Later evidence will go to show the types of activity which will evoke corresponding difficulty within the heart. Heart disease will increase greatly as we enter into the new root grade, particularly during the interim wherein the fact of the centers, their nature and qualities, is admitted and they consequently become the objective of trained attention. Energy follows thought, and this mental focusing upon the centers will inevitably produce overstimulation of all the centers, and this in spite of care and a carefully developed science of the centers. It is something which cannot be avoided, owing to the nervous and uneven unfoldment of man. Later, this stimulation will be regulated and controlled, and the heart will be subjected only to a general strain, along with all the other centers. Cancer is a disease most definitely related to the centers, and it will be found that the center in the area wherein the cancer exists is overactive, with a consequent increase of energy pouring through the related bodily substance. This energy and the overstimulation of a center can be due not only to the activity of the center and its consequent radiation, but also the suppression imposed by the mind upon any activity of a particular center. This brings about a damming up of energy, and again we have the creation of too much concentrated energy in any particular area. One of the main sources of cancer is related to the sacral center, and therefore to the sex organ, has been the well-intentioned suppression of the sex life, and of all thought connected with the sex life, by misguided aspirants, they are those who find the teaching, monastic and celibate, of the middle age of the line of least resistance. In that period of time, 
good people taught that sex was evil and wicked, something not to be mentioned, and a potent source of trouble. Normal reaction. In